Hi, hello. Um, my name is Izumi Yokoyama. Um, I was born and raised in Japan. Um, I lived there for about 17, 18 years, and I moved to the uh, United States to go to school. And um, so now, half my life I lived over there, and half um, I've been in this country. And thank you so much for um, inviting me to present and share some of uh, the process and my artworks that I've been uh, creating here in New Mexico, um, in Taos, New Mexico. And I was um, invited to uh, share some of my processes, um, ideas, and how I work and create my works today. So I'm very happy to share that. And I, I would like to start with um, the materials and techniques how um, I use them to create my drawings. And if um, you get a chance to go to my website, uh, www.izumiyokoyama.com, um, I post and update my new works there. And you can also view most of my um, past works from installation works to uh, current ink pen drawings. And I also, update my shows and uh, the projects that I am involved uh, monthly. So please check that out when you get a chance. And so when um, I have some of my original works in the background here, um, and in the website, you can see most of my drawings um, that are done with the pigment ink pen drawings and sometimes Sumi ink. I use uh, most of my works of black and white and how I start is, um, uh, it's interesting, I, I used to do a lot more sketches and I think what shifted for me was after I became mom and all of a sudden the time was a way more precious. And also I got to have um, a lot of time to wait until the, the idea is concrete enough for me to give myself go sign. So a lot of the um, designing and sketching actually happened in my head. And when it is concrete enough, I finally um, pull my sketchbook or any paper that's available. Um, a lot of times I actually use my son's uh, drawing papers just to sketch out the ideas. Um, then, and those sketches are very, um, mm, I wouldn't say abstract, but it's it's quite um, a premature. And what happens is that I like what I have in my head is um, pretty precise. So I only use sketch just sort of to confirm myself, the composition, the placement of subject object, and a lot of writing to um, digest and develop the idea as a whole. And the ink pen drawings, it's a, these are the um, pigment ink pens I use for all of my uh, drawings. Uh, if you see my works, they are very intricate lines and very fine lines. I use pens that are varying from 0 0.03 to um, 0 0.7. And 0 0.03 is like just thicker than the hair. And they're very delicate, but it really lets me to um, express some vulnerable um, lines to, you know, I also use a lot of ink pen. And then for me inside the ink, I use a lot of the um, tiny lines. I make a lot of constellation stirs, Milky Ways inside uh, human forms, um, certain animals, and also sometimes coyotes howling, a night sky um, universe. And so inside the darkness, these tiny pens um, let me create the whole different um, world inside the black ink pen world. Um, so these are the very important <laughs> materials um, I use and mostly, I do work on the paper for drawings, but um, I also work as installation artist at a times. 
And that materials really vary from a lot of the yarns, strings, and in the past, I've created this paper crane installations with the students where I taught. Um, we, it was a part of um, cultural historical learning as well, and we created hundreds of paper cranes, and we uh, suspended them, hung them, um, and we created this platform that we could hang them and sort of to symbolize the um, uh, piece. And it was a white papers, and it was, uh, presented in the hallway in the school and it was really great to see individual um, piece coming together as collective and that idea is always so fascinating and I encourage any schools to you know have a, a whole school project um, if not just middle school levels or you know it can be different groups but I think for um, children and myself to see each individual effort coming together as a beautiful art form is just so encouraging and um, very healing. So that's something I would like to continue um, if I get a chance to create something collective, you know, with the community. I would like to always participate in that as well as continuing my um, drawing path. And sometimes I also do um, murals and wall drawings um, sometimes for small businesses um, sometimes for community wall i have done in a, um, a school wall where a gymnasium for uh, creating their uh, sports characters um, it was a coyote so it was coyote coming out the wall and for that i of course i used um, more a uh, stable strong materials such as um, exterior acrylic paint um, and for inside wall, I use um, usually just regular acrylic and I seal it afterwards so it can have a longer lasting um, life. And so yes, my works vary from drawing, um, installation, sculpture to uh, murals. And but other times I also do community projects um, for certain movements um, that is going on in a society and community that I feel strongly driven to. And so those are the four different art forms that I, um, I have been living with currently the last five years. And I'd like to answer any of the questions about that later. I'm gonna move on to um, how my, um, the process, work in my art making process, thinking, designing, um, artistic processes. And I touched a little bit. Um, as the last five years, uh, my, as I was mentioning, my um, initial working, the idea building process shifted from um, writing the ideas that I want to make down and working to it. That's how I used to work. But, um, the last five years works have been mostly, I do get certain visions or ideas um, or sometimes feeling just kind of come down to me. And when that initial process happens, not that I ignore, but I, I, I pay attention, but not so um, focused or intensely. And the reason why is that I've learned that um, it requires some uh, patience for me to wait until the um, ideas and the visions evolve um, in my head, communicating with my mind as well. And so once um, it becomes very strong and powerful, you know, the vision and the ideas or words or feelings um, start coming to visit repeatedly. And it becomes something I just can't um, deny that it's there anymore. And then I will take the next initiative to actually draw it out, um, what I'm seeing or um, what I'm hearing. And that's usually how it begins. And now, fortunately, the last five years, that process has been as, as much as there's so much unknown and it can be a little chaotic first. Um, it's been very 
simple. And I think what happens is that like those ideas communicate with my own curiosity and my curiosity filters through all those thoughts and ideas um, and select chooses and bring it down to me. And that's when my, you know, myself, okay, let's, let's go with the idea. Let's go with the um, design and vision and see if it actually is as powerful as it looks in here, because sometimes, you know, our brains can make everything look so much more fantastic than um, it is on the paper. So it's always an interesting organic process that I enjoy to do. Um, very rarely, I do have a dream about uh, future work. And actually one, this, um, this one over here, um, it's a phoenix ascending, um, leaving the cliff. And this particular scene came to me in my dream, uh, pretty much exactly the way it looked. Perhaps the phoenix was a little bigger um, and maybe the whole drawing was a little bigger, but the, the picture itself is very similar to what you see here. Um, so it was a different challenge that I enjoyed to um, bring something that was already created in my, you know, my dream to um, transfer and transform onto that paper. And so this was really great, but I, I, um, I don't dream very often. So that was another like filtering process, I guess that happened. Like, okay, I have to make this one. And it was very powerful and I'm glad I made this one. But also um, before I could do that, I had to make another, a phoenix piece which is um this one over here and it's called transformation uh, phoenix and it's a, a image of phoenix um a female body of phoenix awaiting patiently for how the while the transformation is happening you know which is burning its own self to become a new and somehow something told me that i needed to create that piece before I will be ready to make ascension, the new life, you know, going into the new journey. And so a lot of times I just have to follow my intuition and, and try to organize and listen. Um, so that's how most of the time I work with my works. And installations can be a little bit different, but usually I do have a vision and I do sketch up. Maybe installation I sketch up more because it's three dimensional works. And then it also depends on the space I'm giving to um, create the piece really affects how the viewers, the visitors experience. So I definitely have to go to this space uh, if it's possible. During the corona, it was impossible. But um, if it's allowed, I visit the site and see what I see and know how I feel. And that's kind of how um, work with it. So really, it's um, like a personal relationship. That's how I see all my works. Um, you know, it really requires patience and um, adaptability and being kind. So uh, it's been really interesting. And the next uh, question is, um, what's my working um, relationship oh i'm sorry the environment so usually for drawings this is uh my one room studio that i work i'm going to do right here. so sometimes i have my works hanging on the wall and um they can be a good inspiration but i there were times that my studio was just one wall. <laughs> I didn't really have any other uh, works waiting. So, um, oh yeah, and then so this is how I work. When I'm drawing, I'm about to start two new works this week. And um, if it's a small work, an internet size, then I can work on my drawing table. But um, once it's, larger or wider than 20 points i have to move on to the wall and that's how i work for my drawings um and then of course the uh, if it's murals or wall drawing or installation then um 
I have to just, I have to sketch well here and then just go there and then start uh, drawing on their wall. And that's a very different, like I, I love having all of the aspects in my uh, work environment. It's really nice to be able to um, work on the large drawings and murals and, you know, being sort of being active physically. And also I love that people can see the process um, passing by my um, work in progress murals. Okay, so, um, oh, I forgot that. Working relationships. Um, yes, working relationships have been um, uh, one of the things that have been changing quite a lot the last five years. Um, after uh, graduating, you know, from grad school, and I quickly shifted to become a full-time mother. Um, and then once my son was um, toddler, I could go back um, to work part-time. And I always enjoyed teaching since um, my college time. So I, it's something I am passionate about. And I think that's one of the reasons why creative people exist in this world is because we get to share, um, to digest, process, you know, what happens in our everyday life. Um, I am currently uh, taking break from teaching at school, um, but I, I would love, I'm looking forward to go back to that um, sometime, maybe when my daughter is a little um, older and then when the <laughs> whole school gets a little more um, settled or go back to the old way, we'll see. Um, but and and then so when I work with the clients, I again it is really um, important to have a kind, flexible relationship with whether clients with the small business owners who need a wall, you know, to uh, be something to uh, update or you know to make it um, the customer's experience more elevated and as a whole, like you know, people like to see art when they're also stopping to purchase the product or eating at the cafe. And so I really try to be a great, like good listener and um, take what they're, oftentimes they, they come to the artists or creators or designers because they can't quite visualize what they want. So um, knowing that and accepting that I am um, the tool that they, need and feeling grateful that they come to me i try to really help and get out what the ideas that they um they have in them and same with the drawing um the commissions i do exactly the same i often visit the uh the client's place where they're thinking about the works to be and what they like what their interests are you know what um what excites them what what brings them peace and that kind of stuff is a very important process and then very similar to when I'm teaching too you know if I if I have <laughs> so much more time and more bodies I'd really love to you know have more time to talk to each individual student and see what their interests are because that's how I feel my art grew was when I could pay um, attention to myself and I became more curious of what's you know what my creative world is happening is um, when each child, when each person um, can be more interested in themselves, then that interest and curiosity are a very important for, for myself. Um, and that's why I would love to share all my art with um, many people, you know, if possible. So, uh, yes, through working for um, my own art, as well as working for community art projects and teaching art to um, uh, kids have been a wonderful experience. And I hope my art can um, at some point um, come across your life and have some kind of messages, especially during these challenging times. Um, I think art is a great tool for anybody and everybody to have, um, you know, to digest certain feelings and anxiety or uh, anything that is challenging you and just being able to draw or 
circle out a doodle, um, it's very helpful and healing. So I really thank you for listening to me today. And thank you for uh, looking at my uh, website. Um, and also I have uh, currently an art show going at the Harwood Museum in Taos. Um, so if you get a chance to come to Taos, please visit Harwood Museum. And I hope you all have a wonderful uh, fall and winter. Thank you.